Our next topic is linear equations, or really systems of linear equations, which are very conveniently represented using matrix vector notation. So uh, uh, a, a set of linear equations, uh, it's a set of m linear equations in n variables. The, n, the variables are going to be called by, well, by tradition, but they can be called anything, x1 up to xn. Um, and there's m equations. Each equation looks like this. It's a, it's a set of coefficients. It's like capital A11 x1 plus A12 x2 up to A1n xn equals B1. So that's like one scalar linear equation is the way people call it. Okay, and so I have m of those. Um, and here, if we collect these x's into uh, a, a vector called x, uh, that's called the variable or the unknowns in the, in the equation. Um, a, i, j, that these are these coefficients in here, those are called the coefficients in the system of linear equations. Um, and the, if you form a matrix A, uh, which in this case is m by n, um, that matrix is called the coefficient matrix of your system of linear equations. Um, B, that's the vector over here, if I collect the b's into one vector, it's called the right-hand side. Now, that's a bit silly because I, it could just as well have been the left-hand side, but by tradition, it's called the right-hand side. Um, and this system of equations can be written in very compact uh, matrix vector notation as Ax equals B, okay? So um, that's some pretty powerful notation there, right? Because this could be, I could write Ax equals B, that's four characters, right? Ax equals and B. And I could be referring to an equation with 5,000 variables, and, you know, 3,000 equations, right? In which case, it'd be a whole lot of, this would be a whole lot of equations and stuff. Um, by the way, the note, you know, the, it's supposed to evoke uh, the same idea for, in another context. In this case, for example, if A and X and B are scalars, right? You would call this a linear equation. Of course, the solution is very silly. It's X equals, you know, B over A. That's if they're scalars. That's the case M equals N equals 1. Uh, of course, this has no meaning whatsoever uh, when, when these are vectors and matrices. We will see the correct analog of this equation later, but that's later in the course. For now, we're just talking about representing a set of linear equations beautifully compactly with matrix notation. AX equals B packs, a, there's a lot of information in, in that. Okay, now we classify sets of linear equations uh, depending on the size of A, the dimensions of A. Uh, so it's called underdetermined if M is less than N. That means that the coefficient matrix is wide. It has more columns than it has rows. Now remember that the columns of the, co of the coefficient matrix are associated with the variables, the X's, the XI's. Um, the rows are associated with the actual individual scalar equations. So that's how that works. And underdetermined says, roughly speaking, there are fewer equations than there are variables. Okay? It's called, the system is called a square system if they're equal, if m equals n. That means there's, you know, there, for example, there's 20 variables, 20 equations. Okay? So that's called a square system of linear equations. And it's called overdetermined if there are more equations than there are unknowns. Uh, and that means that the coefficient matrix A is tall. Uh, and an example would be, I have 10 variables and I have 20 equations. Uh, and that's called overdetermined. These, these, be, these names will become clearer uh, later as well. Uh, now, a vector X is called a solution if AX equals B. That means it satisfies all the linear equations you have, okay? Now, depending on A and B, uh, there can be either no solution, uh, one solution, or many solutions, right? And so all three of these are possible, um, and, and we'll have a pretty complete analysis of that by, by the end of the class. Um, we'll also, much more importantly, be able to see how to actually compute a solution, and certainly we'll be able to calculate the solution when there is only one. Again, that's later in the class, but for now we're just talking about linear equations. Um, so we'll see later actually how to solve them. All right, so we're gonna look at an example, uh, and it's just to show you how, uh, it's just to show you an example of linear equations. This one is taken from uh, very elementary chemistry, uh, which I took 
<clears throat> I don't know, 40 years ago, maybe more. Okay, anyway, let's go on. Um, so a chemical reaction, actually, I think it was longer. Okay, a chemical reaction involves, uh, let's say, P reactants and Q products. Um, each of the reactants is a molecule, um, and each of the products is also a molecule. Um, and you, it's written this way. You write A1, R1, uh, plus dot, 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 plus AP, RP, goes to, or in the reaction becomes, B1, P1, plus up to BQ, PQ. Now, this, 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 these are not, you know, that's, that's not multiplication of numbers, right? This, it, it's a different notation system. And what it says is, uh, what this declares is that you have a bunch of reactants, um, and they come together, and some chemistry happens, and then what happens is you would take A1 units of reactant 1, A2 units of reactant 2, up to AP units of reactant uh, P. And the, it, the unit could be, for example, literally molecules, right? And then what happens is, well, the chemistry happens then. And then what, what happens when, when the chemistry is done is you end up with B1 units of P1, uh, that's your product number one, up to BQ units of a product of the last uh, Q, of, of the last product, okay? So that's, that's how that works. Um, and then these A's are, uh, and B's are positive coefficients. Now, they're, they're generally integers, um, but in fact, this, the reaction is the same if you multiply it by any, by, by any positive number, right? So if you multiplied all the coefficients by half, it would be describing the same, uh, the, the same reaction, um, the same chemical uh, equation. Okay, so that's, that's, that's the idea here. Let's look at a very simple example, uh, which is electrolysis of water. So, okay, so here, uh, here's, the, here's the equation, uh, the, the, the so-called chemical equation, um, and it says that this says, uh, so on the left, there is one reactant, it's water, H2O. Uh, now that, of course, means that water, a water molecule consists of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, right? So that's, that's the chemical notation. Um, by the way, uh, if you don't know this, it's fine. No problem. This is just an example of a set of linear equations. So you do not need to know chemistry. Trust me, I don't. Well, I did at one point a long, long time ago. Um, so you don't need to know. This. this is just supposed to be an example. Okay. So this says on, on the left, there's one reactant. It's a water molecule. It's H2O. Um, and on the right, we get two molecules. Uh, we get a hydrogen and oxygen. Those are gases, uh, and it's a, these are molecules, right? So H by itself is a hydrogen atom. H sub 2 is a hydrogen gas molecule, and same for O2. I mean, it doesn't have to be a gas, or whatever. It's, hydrogen, it's a hydrogen molecule. Okay, um, so we get two products, which is hydrogen, the molecule, H2, and oxygen, that is O2. Um, okay, and what this reaction says is that it takes two water molecules, that's two of the H2O, and something happens. Uh, well, in fact, quite specifically, electrolysis happens, uh, and it produces two hydrogen molecules and one oxygen molecule. Okay, so that's uh, that's what this reaction says. Uh, okay, so that that's an example of a chemical equation. So equations, chemical equations, uh, uh, should be balanced. They have to be balanced, right? Um, which corresponds basically to just conservation of mass uh, of the different, well, the different types of atoms. Um, so the idea is that each molecule in the, either the reactant or the product contains specific numbers of atoms, uh, and that's given in its chemical formula. So for example, here's a water molecule, and each water molecule contains two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. So that's two H and one O. Okay, now conservation of mass says that, I mean, assuming this is not some crazy, like, you know, nuclear or fusion, fusion reaction, it basically says that the, um, the total number of each atom among the reactants um, should exactly balance the number of atoms uh, that come out in the products, okay? And so that, that's kind of the idea. And that says the equation must balance. Um, okay, so, and that means, for example, for each atom, that comes in either the reactants or products, the total on the left-hand side has to equal the total on the right-hand side. Um, so when we write down, uh, when we write down uh, electrolysis, that's two uh, H2O, let me go back to it. It's, yeah, okay, it's two H2O goes to two 
uh, let's see, where is it? It's 2H2 plus O2. Then we check, right? On the left-hand side, um, e there's two water molecules. Each water molecule has two hydrogen atoms. So the total number of hydrogen atoms on the left-hand side among the reactants um, is four hydrogen atoms. Now, on the right, um, <coughs> the number of hydrogen atoms is there's two hydrogen molecules. Each of those has two hydrogen atoms, so I got four, so everything's cool. I had four hydrogen atoms on the left, four on the right. The left being the reactants, the right being the products, okay? And you can check also that there's two oxygen atoms on the, uh, on the left and two on the right, or you would say two oxygen atoms among the reactants and among the products is two oxygen atoms as well. Uh, and they're, they are found in one oxygen molecule. Okay, now, if I give you the the if, if I give you uh, the constituents, the reactants and the products, um, there's the task of figuring out what are the coefficients that 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 lead to balancing. Okay, so that's called balancing chemical equations. <coughs> okay, so we're going to set that up and show how we'll write that as a system of linear equations. Um, now we can't yet solve systems of linear equations, but don't worry. That's coming later in the course. Actually, not even that much later. It's coming. Okay, so what we're going to do is, uh, so this is just an example to show how do we set up a, a practical thing like balancing chemical equations. How do we set that up as a set of linear equations? Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we consider a reaction with M types of atoms, P reactants, and Q products. And I'll make a reactant matrix, I'll call that R. And Rij is the number of atoms of type I in reactant Rj, okay? Um, and so that's a matrix, and that's a beautiful matrix, right? It tells you it's highly interpretable, right? If you look at the rows, uh, the a, 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 a row corresponds to a fix, uh, you know, a, a, a tells you about the atoms and how they, uh, actually how many of a certain type of atom I appears in all the reactants. A column tells you about, it basically tells you, you know, what is reactant, uh, what does that reactant co uh, consist of, right? Um, so, super interesting. By the way, the matrix R could be sparse. That's super interesting. That means that most of the reactants only involve, only contain a few of the atom types, for example. Okay, all right. Um, and we'll let A be the vector of reactant coefficients. Um, then if I multiply R by A, the matrix R by A, I get basically the vector of the total numbers of atoms of each type in the reactants. Okay? So if I've got, I, I here have, I have M, uh, what I do is, is I, I, I have the, the total, I get the total number of each type of atom in all of the reactants put together. That's R times A, okay? Uh, now we'll, we'll define a, uh, a product matrix the same way. And so it will have, and you know, the entries are typically uh, integers. That doesn't matter to us. Um, okay, and then in a similar way, P times B, that's matrix vector multiplication, is a way to calculate all of the, number, the, numbers, uh, the numbers of each of the different types of atoms that you would get in all the products together, in, including, by the way, the coefficients in front of them. Conservation of mass then comes down to this super compact formula. It says Ra equals Pb. That's a vector equal with uh, m. The left and right hand side is an m vector, where m is the total number of atoms appearing in your equation. Okay, so that's what it is. It's it, it looks like this. so Ra equals Pb. Okay, so balancing is this equation in matrix vector notation. Now we're going to write this. Um, as uh, a, a, set of, a system of linear equations for the coefficients. And we'll start by writing it this way. Remember that Ra equals Pb expresses balance. And we're going to first write that as Ra minus Pb equals zero. And then finally, we're going to write that in block matrix notation as this is a, a block matrix here. Um, <coughs> R. Uh, concatenated, app, you know, horizontally concatenated with minus P times A stacked on top of B, okay? So now you have to remember that when you stack 
when we know that when you do these stacks, it all works out. So this is literally R A minus P B equals zero, and that that's exactly what this is. But we write it this way, okay? Um, now, unfortunately, that that is a, that's a that's a bona fide set of linear equations. Now, unfortunately, uh, A equals B equals zero is uh, satisfies that set of that that equation. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. That simply says that if I take zero of all the reactants, then and I get zero of all the products. And that definitely works, right? Because, you know, there's an, certainly an equal number of hydrogen and carbon and nitrogen and so on atoms on the, in the reactants and the products, which is zero in all cases. Um, but it's not interesting and doesn't help us. Um, to find a non-zero solution, we're going to set one of the coefficients, like A1. That is the number of the first reactant, the number of molecules that go into your reactants. I'm just going to set that to be one, okay? Um, then I can express, I, I'm going to do some more stacking. And I'm going to write here this way. I get a big matrix here, which is R minus P. Um, this, the height of this is M. Uh, the height of this part is 1. I'm going to stack it as E1 transpose with 0 next to it. When I multiply this out, I get E1 transpose A. Um, A1 is E1 transpose A. So, so this is a, uh, a that's a, a set of equations. Uh, EM plus 1. Um, the right-hand side is got a 0, all zeros, and a 1 at the bottom. Uh, and... So you could say from this set, this is a set of m plus 1 linear equations in p plus q variables. And the first m equations give you the balance. Um, the last equation says that you're simply going to take one reactant of R1, one unit of R1. That's all in your, in, in your thing. Okay? Now, um, we don't, this, this equation doesn't take into account the fact that these are non-negative integers, but let's not worry about that. Okay. Um, now, you also have conservation of charge. Uh, so, uh, for example, if, I, if these are ions and I put a charge, I can put a charge. Uh, uh, I actually forgot what this is. It's some kind of chromium. I, I, I don't know what it is. It doesn't matter. But it, the 2 minus above it says it's got a charge of minus 2. So it's got a, uh, it's got a surface of a, it's got a, um, it's got more electrons than it has protons. And so it's got a charge of minus 2. Um, conservation of charge also says that it's not just the constituent atoms, but also uh, the charge has to balance on each side of the equation. And so charge simply becomes another type of, of uh, atom to balance. It's, it's very simple. Okay, so now we'll do, um, <coughs> well, a pretty hairy example. And um, I'm, I don't mind saying that I have absolutely no idea what this equation, uh, what this uh, chemical uh, equation tells us or this chemical reaction is. Um, I imagine it's an important one. Um, okay, in any case, um, let's see what it is. Uh, basically, there are three reactants. Uh, there's this one, uh, this one, which has some of your chromium or something like that. That's that's something like it. That's not that's iron. I, that that much I do remember. Um, and that's a that's a hydrogen uh, atom, actually with its electron ripped off. Uh, so it's got a it's a it's a hydrogen ion. Um, Okay, and then on the other side, we've got, you know, the, the uh, maybe the atomic uh, chromiums. I don't, I shouldn't say anything, because anything I say, I'm just going to be, people are going to make fun of me, so it's fine, which, I, which doesn't bother me, by the way, it's fine. Um, okay, and then we have another one, uh, which, is, um, which is, which is iron over here on the other side, and then we have water, okay? So that much I know, fine. So there's five atoms. Um, and uh, there's five atoms or charge, right? So you have, you know, chromium, oxygen, iron, hydrogen, and charge, okay? Um, now, the reactant and, pro and, and, and product matrix, uh, you can, these, you, the coefficients you read off from these numbers here, like CR2, O7, 2 minus, these just, that just reads right into your reactant matrix. There is your product matrix. Um, and remember that the height of this is uh, is going to tell us is is the number of uh, constituent uh, atoms, and the last one is going to give you charge. Okay, so uh, okay. Now, if you want, we can audit one of these, right? Like, uh, well, I, maybe we don't need to. It's fine. Um, okay. So now, if we work out, if we do exactly what we worked out over here, very abstractly, uh, right here, this one, 
uh, we, we just simply write up this big equation and we get this set of equations right here. And it's a square system of equations. There are six unknowns, which are the three reactant numbers, uh, the, th the three uh, product numbers, um, and we have a set of six equations. Now, it's a bit silly because we know instantly what A1 is because this bottom equation here says that A1 is 1, right? So, but nevertheless, this, we've just written this as, you know, AX equals B. Um, this is the matrix A. It's 6 by 6. It's square. This is, you know, quote, X. And this is B, and you have to, you have to forgive me because that clashes with our notation B for, for uh, the vector of reactants. But still, this is the idea. It's a big matrix times a vector is equal to another vector. Okay. Um, now, this you can solve. Uh, we're not saying yet how to do that. You can probably guess, how, well, doesn't matter, you may have even seen it before. Um, pretty soon in the course, you will know how to solve linear equations. Um, and uh, when you solve this set of linear equations, you get, it. you're lucky, it has one solution. And that solution turns out to be uh, 1, 6, 14, 2, 6, 7. And there's, there's your balanced equation right there. And you can check that the... You know, the total number of hydrogens is, hydrogen atoms is the same on each side. Well, we could check that, sure. On the left-hand side, you have 14 hydrogen atoms. On the right-hand side, you also have 14 because you have two per water molecule and you've got seven water molecules, 14. We could check, I don't know, you know, charge maybe? That's like, um, you know what? Forget it. It, it balances, right? That That's it. Um, so these are the coefficients. Now, you could have found this by just messing around. Uh, I mean, it's not that hard to solve a set of equations like this, especially with a whole lot of zeros. I'm talking about by hand, right? Um, but nevertheless, later we will we will we'll see very organized ways. Not by the way, not just to solve six by six sets of linear equations, but you'll be able to solve six hundred by six hundred sets of linear equations, and you'll be able to do that super fast. Uh, in fact, that's kind of something very important about this class. We will get to that later. So. This is nothing but an example. I don't care about chemistry. Actually, I've forgotten all the chemistry I ever learned, which was very, very little, and it was a long time ago. Uh, so just remember, this is just an example to show how, uh, in some applied area, uh, systems of linear equations comes up. It, they, they come up in many, many other areas, in like, for example, mechanical equilibrium, uh, all in economics, they, it comes up. It comes up in many, many, many fields.